everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about the silver acoustic for for I, and uh, I will extend this to both heavy method and second method. So at first, I want to briefly introduce this paper. Uh, strain study is very special example where the Newton's method fails to find its use for real initial cases. Uh, the equation is very simple. We all know that the rules for this equation is positive and negative I. But following this recursive formula, we will see the sequence will never converge to the rules we want. Um, we can put this problem in the complex plane. So here the two points there is the roots of this equation, I and negative I. The basin of attraction are the half plane. So all the iteration starts from the up half plane will converge to I, while the iteration starts from the lower half plane will converge to negative I. The basis of attraction are separated by the real line. So this is where our process our problem comes up. Uh, when the iteration starts from the real initial values, it will always stay on the line. So since we have already know that it will not converge to either i or negative i, so we want to know that the sequence diverge to infinity. To solve this problem, string found one trigonometric identity here, which looks very similar to the recursive formula. So if we let xn equals to the cotangent of an angle, then the next iteration will be the cotangent of the double of the angle. Here, the formula provided by string is xn equals to cotangent of the 2 to n of the initial angle theta 0. And with this formula, it is much easier to analyze its asymptotic behavior. So if the initial angle is, can be written as k pi over 2 to n, then we have xn equals to the cotangent of a multiple of pi, which is equals to infinity. So the iteration follows up. One example for this case is the initial angle theta zero equals pi over four. Another case is when the theta zero is the fractional multiple of pi, other than the one we have talked about, k over two to pi, then the iteration eventually cycles. In addition, when theta zero can be written as this form, like an uh, integer of multiple pi over 2 to n minus 1, we will see that x0 equals to xn, which means the iteration of period n cycles from the start point. And the third case is when the initial angle is an irrational multiple of pi. <coughs> In this case, the iteration is not periodic or convergent. Then I show the results numerically. All the computation computations are done by May 4, 2015 with 32 digits. This is an example for the periodic iteration. I choose the initial angle at pi over 3. Then this fraction can be written in the form like 1 over 2 to 2 minus 1. So from which we can know the period is 2. And by a very simple computation we see <coughs> it is have x0 equals to x2. So the iteration oscillates between the two points. But we can see from there up like a hundred steps, the periodic periodicity is destroyed by the growing round of error. There is the example for the non-periodic iteration. So the for this case the initial angle I chose is pi over square root of two. From this graph we can see the iteration is not periodic or convergent. So now I extend this to both Haley's method and the second method. Using the same example again, we obviously we can see neither Haley's method or the second method converge to the roots even at the initial values. So first let's talk about the Haley's method. The iterative mm -hmm. formula is given like this. Mm, so inspired by strength idea, I also turn to the trigonometric identity, try to find something very similar to this expression. This is the one I found that is the cotangent of triple in, triple angle. So likewise, we have the formula. Xn equals to the cotangent of 3 to n, the initial angle theta 0. So the only difference between this formula and the formula given by string 
is the number here. But for Higgs method, it is three, and for Newton's method, it is two. So this is interesting because we have already know that the rate of convergence for the Higgs method is cubic, and for the Newton's method, that is quadratic. And with this formula, we can analyze its asymptotic behavior. So the first case, the iteration diverges to infinity. If the initial angle satisfies k pi over 3 to f, then we have one angle theta n is the mass of pi, whose cotangent is infinity. One example, is, a simple example is the initial angle equals to pi over 9. So we know x2 is the cotangent of pi, which is negative infinity. And this below is the result I obtained from Maple. Uh, here for x2, you see that um, without return the negative infinity, we expect it gives a very large positive number. So this is because of the rod of error. And after that, since this number is very large, then the next step after that is approximately one third of the previous one. And then we will see the iteration decreases to something smaller in flat. If smaller in flat, then it will be pushed back to something very large. So there's 10 to the 31. That's not, that's wrong? Is that, is that the truth? Or is that's, that's, it wrong? That's wrong. It should be negative infinity, but the result given by... It should be what? Negative infinity. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I, here I only show only 10 decimals here because of the space, but the digits I use for computation is 32 digits. <coughs> and the second case is the iteration eventually cycle. So if the initial angle is the fractional mark of pi, um, other than this one, other than that one, k over 3 to n. So under this condition, we have the expression for theta n, that is 3 to n p mark of pi over q. So within q step, there must exist two different integers, 3 to lp and 3 to np, that differ by a multiple of q. Then the angles will differ by a multiple <coughs> of pi. They will give the same cotangent values, which means we have two repeating terms, xl equals to xl. The sequence starts to cycle. And the periodicity also has different patterns. The simple case is it starts to cycle from the initial point. In this case, we only require x0 equals to x10, xm, which gives the condition for the initial angle equals to k pi over 3 to n minus 1. Here are the two examples. One is the fraction is 1 over 8, another is the fraction 1 over 7. We can write the two fractions in this form. The first one, that indicating the period is 2. And the second one indicating the this is the period six sequence. And I show the two examples numerically. The upper one is the given by the initial angle theta equal to pi over eight, and the lower one is given the initial angle pi theta equal to pi over seven. These two results are a little bit different. For this first one, uh, we can see this oscillation looks very good. It also is between the two limits, and this is for the first 200, 200 steps. But for the second one, also I showed the first two, 200 steps, the periodicity only holds for no more than 10 periods, then destroyed by the lot of air. And another case is the initial value is not repeating. So here is one example where you could have used bigger precision, right, instead of 32. Um, if you check yeah. 60, mm -hmm. like 2,000 digits of precision, yeah, it I would look that. totally different, mm -hmm. right? Uh, for, at first, I tried digit 16, which is a very small number. And this one will destroy the very first, like, only after five periods. Then I change this to 32, and it, this keeps a little bit longer. So with Higher digits, it should be more precise, but there still exists a lot of error.
And so for this one, choose the theta zero with pi over 12. And by computation, we know x1 equals x3. So the iterate starts to cycle after the first step with zero 2. Uh, one question for this is that, um, is there a way similar to the other one? If we give the initial angle, how can we de determine the length of the one prime period? So here is the one way. If we can write the fraction internally, so it's easy to show that when the fraction multiple three, the point moves when one place to the right. <coughs> it's kind of like the shift map. And when this multiple pi, uh, its cotangent value doesn't affect it by the integer parts. So only the fractional parts are affected. <coughs> now we can look at the examples again. For the first one, the iteration flows up, we choose the fraction equals to 1 or 9, which is equals to 0 0.01 internally. This is a finite decimal. So we also see the sequence only exists for no more than two steps. And for the other three examples, these fractions are, are infinite decimals internally. So we can see the sequence also have infinite terms. For the, the second one and third one, 1 over 8 and 1 over 7, uh, there are two digits in the repeat for 1 over 8. So this is the same length of the period for the iteration. And for 1 over 7, there are six digits in one repeat. So this is the period 6 sequence. And for the last one, 1 over 12, there is the non-repeating term in the decimal that is zero. And we also saw from the from earlier that x zero is not repeating. It starts for, it starts to cycle from the second step. We have x one equals to x three. And there also exist period one <coughs> cycles, which is doesn't exist for Newton's method. Th which this means the iterations are actually convergent. So if we have one of the steps that returns zero which means the angle is congruent to pi over 2 module pi. And it's easy to know the next angle, the triple of this previous one, also module, uh, also congruent to pi over 2 module pi. So it also returns the next iteration equals to 0. All the numbers of xn are zeros. But this, con this convergence is serious because we have already known that x equal to zero is not the root we are looking for. In this case, the initial angle of that is theta zero equals pi over three times three, uh, two times three to n. And the last case is the iteration not parallel or convergent if the initial angle is an irrational mass of pi. So here is the figure for one iteration, even the initial angle equals pi over square root of two. So here's the two pics that truncated, since I want to show more details around the axis. And instead of the sequence of the iteration, we are more interested to the sequence of angles module pi. Since we know it is non periodic and they are bounded by the interval zero to pi. So this is the chaotic, chaotic resistance. And now we can move to the second method. The iterative formula is in like this. So different with the above two methods, which only need one initial point. So this one, the next iteration is based on previous two steps. The Identity I found which is similar to the expression is the cotangent of sum. So here, the, the sequence of the angle is a general Fibonacci sequence. We have this formula for xn, where the capital F here denotes the Fibonacci sequence. Since this, is, this one is a little bit more complicated to analyze, uh, we find another way to do some research about it. Based on the results we found of the two previous methods, I think we still have a good way to try 
to guess what will happen to this equation. So our first guess is that if both the two initial angles are rational map for pi, then the, inter then the sequence will either diverge to infinity or eventually cycles. And for the first example, we said theta 0 is pi over 4 and theta 1 is pi over 2. <coughs> there here is the sequence of the angle module pi. And we saw that we have theta 4 equals to 1, which gives x4 is the infinity. So for this case, the equation blows up. And for the second example, we have theta 0 equals pi over 8 and theta 1 is pi over 2. This yields a sequence of pure 12. Then we want to know how to distinguish these two different patterns. When the sequence goes to infinity, there must exist one angle that congruent with zero module pi. Hence, if we set the angle before that equal to theta, which bounded by zero and pi, then the previous period one should module pi minus theta module uh, module pi. Then we can go back to the initial point and construct a general Fibonacci sequence. This is the Fibonacci sequence G. So if we set G, uh, G negative one equals to theta and G negative two <coughs> equals pi minus theta, we can conclude a general formula for G. This is written in terms of the Fibonacci sequence. With this formula, we can have the expression for the two initial angles, which should be congruent with g negative n and g negative n minus 1 module pi. So to eliminate theta, which gives the relationship between the two initial angles. And this is my result. If there exist two successive Fibonacci terms whose combination with the to initial angles is the mass flow of pi, then the iteration will finally flow up. Otherwise, the iteration eventually cycles. And here is another guess. If either the two initial angles is an irrational of mass flow of pi, then both the sequence of the angles module pi and the sequence of the iteration is non-periodic. Here are two examples. One is theta 0 to pi over 4 and theta 1 into pi over square root of 2. And example 2, I only change the order of the two initial angles. And again, we focus on the Fibonacci sequence of angles module pi. This gives another two chaotic systems, since they are all bounded and non periodic. Okay, so here, here is my reference. The second one is what I found later that proved the result about this Fibonacci sequence module pi. And thank you for your listening, and I also want to give my special thanks to Lord Curtis. I should also point out